Jadev is back at it here to give everyone my top 100 favorite movies of all time, part two. Previously, I ranked the first 10 movies, 100 through 91. And in this particular video, I'll rank movies 90 through 81. Of course, there's going to be spoilers. Keep in mind, these are my favorite movies of all time. Not necessarily the 100 greatest movies, or I guess in this video, the 10 greatest movies. And if you have a movie list of your own, or if you've made a YouTube video of your favorite movies, go ahead and leave the list in the comment section or leave the link. And I'll definitely check it out because I want to see where everybody else is at. People that are watching my stuff, I'll definitely watch your stuff. At least your movie list. And I'll give my my thoughts. You know, don't hate. I'll just give my things. If there's a movie I don't like, I might mention like, wow. Well, I'm not a fan of that one. But hey, there's got to be a fan somewhere. And remember, spoilers may happen. I don't know what I'm going to talk about. I'm going to name the movie and then I'll just start talking. That's what I do. So starting it off. Well, where we left off, coming in at number... 90 Saw 2. This is the only Saw movie that's going to make my top 100 favorite movies of all time. I do like all the Saw movies, but particularly I do like Saw 2. I thought it was not as predictable as Saw 1. I'm sorry. Saw 1, while it's a great film and the ending is good, the dead body in the room... Why is that dead body in the room? You haven't focused on that the whole movie. I just knew that that person was going to end up being alive somehow, some way. So, but Saw 2, because the fact that Amanda was in a trap and just what happened to her, and she was, I, I should have figured it out probably, but it was the least predictable of all the Saw movies, in my opinion, out of all nine. Of course, I've done a ranking of those. You can find that on my channel somewhere. Uh, keep that in mind. And uh, I just really liked the movie. I thought it was a lot better, like more faster paced. The first one was kind of slow, where this one had a lot more characters to kind of get behind. You had Xavier, he did good. Jonas, you had Daniel Matthews, of course, the epic Eric Matthews, who was so epic in this particular movie. I really like Detective Matthews. He's definitely probably my favorite character in the Saw franchise. So, Saw 2, coming in at number 90. The movie I chose for number 89, which I haven't seen a lot lately, but I watched it probably three or four times within the first two years it came out. Definitely a movie that should have won an Oscar. Maybe it did. I don't recall. I don't watch the Oscars because usually movies I don't like win Oscars. But The Wrestler. As a wrestling fan at one point, the movie is a good interpretation of a wrestler's life. Uh, Mickey Rourke plays Randy the Ram, and Randy the Ram was, uh, it was pretty entertaining. It had another backstory, you know, not just the wrestler, but the, the issues with him and his daughter trying to get to know his daughter a little bit. And, uh, you know, the wrestler going and having fun at the strip club, uh, with, you know, it's just, I really like the movie. I haven't watched it in a while. Makes me think I should watch it right after this video, but the wrestler coming in at number 89. Number 88, a movie that was part of a trilogy, an awesome tr trilogy, and all these movies do make my list, spoiler alert, um, Batman Begins. It was a really good movie. Christian Bale really was good as Batman. Although people give Ben Affleck hate for his portrayal of Batman, I don't mind Ben Affleck as Batman, but Christian Bale, he's got kind of Bruce Wayne and Batman down good where I think Ben Affleck is good as Bruce Wayne and okay to all right as Batman but uh, this was the start of an epic series of movies I mean Dark Knight Rises Dark Knight both incredible movies and this I think a lot of people forget how good this particular movie was and I must say this I don't care what anybody says Katie Holmes is so much better then Maggie Gyllenhaal in The Dark Knight that took over the role of Rachel Dawes. I couldn't stand Maggie Gyllenhaal. I really liked Katie Holmes as Rachel Dawes, and I was very, very upset that she didn't come back to do the part two, I guess you want to call it. So Batman Begins, number 88. Number 87. So the last list, I put The Notebook on there, and I have another chick flick I guess you could say but I this is kind of a go-to movie for me when I want to watch a comedy with a little lovey dove stuff in it I really like the movie it's made of honor with 
Patrick Dempsey. And I just really enjoy the movie. It's about a guy that's kind of a player back in the day. He's sleeping with a bunch of chicks. He goes to this party. He ends up sleeping or trying to sleep with the wrong girl. And then this, this female he becomes friends with, like they're best friends. And they do everything together, but they're not in a relationship. And then he finds out that she's uh, meets this guy when she's on a business trip to Scotland. And she's going to get married to him. So then he realizes that, like, oh my god, I'm in love with her. And uh, I I enjoy it. Is it the greatest movie ever? No, but it's actually quite enjoyable. So, Maid of Honor, if you haven't seen it yet, check it out. That's my 87th movie. Number 86, a movie actually used to be a lot higher, and it's still good. I just... There's so many good movies that have come out in the past 10 years that it kind of dropped down the list. One of my favorite Adam Sandler movies, not my favorite, but Click. This was a little bit more drama-ish than I was expecting. Of course, it's mainly a comedy, but there's some like moments where you're like, oh my God, uh, the premise is Adam Sandler's character, which I don't recall his name in the movie now. It's, I'll think of it eventually. Um, he is tired of like different things happening. He is mad about his job. He wants to get promoted. And he, eventually he goes to this place where Christopher Walken's character gives him this remote control where he can like pause, fast forward, rewind his life. So there's points where he's just like pro fast forward to when I get a promotion or do this. And it's just, I don't know. It's a really touching movie. Um, I enjoy it. It's definitely wasn't what I was expecting. I really like it though. Kate Beckinsale is hot as hell in this movie. And you've got a, a, a younger Casey Cassidy uh, in it as his older version of his daughter. And uh, the Fonz is in it. And uh, that's, that's, I'm just saying and uh, a lot, but it's, it's a fun movie. I recommend it. Click number 86. Number 85, a movie that used to be very high up on the list in the top 50s. But again, so many movies have come out and, you know, sometimes when I watch things a lot more, I start to depict things. I'm like, well, this isn't right. But this movie's awesome. And it's Resident Evil Apocalypse. Or Resident Evil Part 2. Um, I don't like the fact that they called it Apocalypse because there's nothing about Apocalypse in the movie. It's Nemesis is in it, which is awesome. They bring a bunch of video game characters in the movie like Jill Valentine, Valentine and uh, Carlos, Odette Fair. And I don't like Mila Jolovich as Allison. Or no, Alice, not Allison. But the rest of the movie is awesome. The It's so much better. The first one's really good. The first one's more horror-based, where this is more a horror comedy thriller type. But I really enjoy Resident Evil Apocalypse. I want to say Nemesis, but it's not Nemesis. But Nemesis is in it, and it's awesome. The one, the one part where LJ's like, and I only drive a Cadillac. And there's another part where the, the stars people go to LJ. They ambush him. And then he's like, I got my shit custom or something like that. But love the movie. Resident Evil Apocalypse number 85. Number 84. I like the action adventure movies where you kind of have to put things together. It's got one of the best actors of all time in it. Tom Hanks. I'm talking about the Da Vinci Code. I really like how the how it kind of pieces together. The whole religious aspect behind the movie, I'm not a big fan of, but the movie is highly entertaining. It's got Sir Ian McKellen in it as well, and it just flows really well. It kind of reminds me of an Indiana Jones meets National Treasure meets something else. So, um, Da Vinci Code, number 84. Number 83, a movie that or should be possibly a little higher, but I'm leaving it at this point right now. It's the fourth installment of the movies that hit the theater. I'm talking about American Reunion. This movie brought all the characters from the first two American Pie movies back, where the third American Pie movie, American Wedding, didn't bring hardly anybody back. They brought a couple guys back, but this one brought everybody back, and it was just really funny. I really enjoy those movies. Those movies are very hilarious. Even the one that... Okay, I don't count the straight to DVD or Blu-ray ones. Those, I don't count any of those. But the... Even American Wedding, which is obviously the, the far less superior film, is really enjoyable, actually. Pretty funny. I mean, that's... 
The first two got to be at least a 9 out of 10. The third one's probably a solid 8. And then the fourth one, it could be an 8 to a 9. It, it's somewhere in between. But I really like American Reunion. And I'm hoping that they do another one, which I think they will. They probably will. So that's why that's 83. Number 82, True Lies. Pretty awesome movie. Pretty good spy movie. Good chemistry between Arnold Schwarzenegger and Jamie Lee Curtis. It's got a very young Elijah Dushku in the movie. Tom Arnold's great. Um, I'm trying to think else what I could say about it. Really good action. Good stuff. Although it's been a while since I watched this movie. So I need to watch it. This and The Wrestler. So True Lies, 82. And rounding out this top 10, my number 81st favorite movie of all time, which used to be a lot higher on my list, probably in the mid-40s, Short Circuit. Movie is hilarious. I love the cast in that movie. Uh, Steve Gutenberg, Ali Sheedy. Um, I'm trying to remember the guy that played Benjamin. It's uh, He was in Blacklist, too. Uh, it's irrelevant. Uh, Fisher Stevens. I knew I'd think of it. Just hilarious. The lines that Johnny Five says are great. No disassemble. More input. Input. Need input. And just the things the robot learns. And how these, these characters in the movie care for this robot. And then the ending that the robot's actually alive when you thought the robot was dead. I just really like the movie. I mean, it was a movie that used to, used to be a go-to movie for me a lot. I moved it down the list a little bit because it is a little cheesy at times. And they were supposed to remake it, but they didn't. But I'm hoping that they still do. We'll see what happens. But Short Circuit is number 81. So, what do you think of these 10 movies? Are these movies that are on your favorite movie list? They might not be, but hey, I like these movies. I have different reasons for liking them, obviously. So, make sure you leave comments. Like I'd mentioned before, if you have a list of your own, or if you have a YouTube video that you did a list of, leave that in the comments section. I'll definitely check it out. Because, well, it's important to know what people like as movies. You don't have to do a top 100. You can do a top 10, top 20, top 50. Whatever you can do, I'll check it out. And uh, keep in mind, I'll be doing part 3, which will be movies um, 80 through 71. It should be out within 3 to 4 days. And I'll put a link to part 1 in the, in the end, uh, end of the video. And of course... Smash the like button, and last but certainly not least, don't forget to hit that sub button, subscribe to the channel, join the team, show your damn support, and be a part of something special. Keep enjoying movies, and JDev will return.